Hey guys, Dubes here. Today I'm going to show you how to stream your DJ sets using OBS. Cheers! Ah, that's still really hot. Okay, so a few weeks ago I showed you how to stream your sets with your phone. So why would you then use OBS to do your streaming? Basically, you can do a lot more with OBS. Uh, you can use multiple camera angles, use clean slates, add in graphics, text, logos, all those kind of things to make your DJ stream more personal and also more professional looking, I guess. So I will start with the caveat that for this to work smoothly, you do need quite a lot of stuff. And basically you're gonna to have to weigh up whether or not you've got enough things already in your arsenal to make this worthwhile. Anyway, this video is gonna be long enough as it is, so let's crack on. Hardware, here is what you're gonna need. Your normal DJ setup. So for example, your decks or your mixer or your controller. I personally use my DJ MS9. I run Serato on my 2015 MacBook Pro. You are also going to need an audio interface. I use my Focusrite Sapphire 24. You're gonna need cables to run from your mixer to your interface. You're gonna need a webcam. I use my Logitech C920. And you're also gonna need OBS Studio. It's free to download and I'll put a link in the description. So these are optional but very recommended extras. The first thing is another computer. Now I know that most people probably don't have two computers lying around but you may have to you know sweet talk your brother, mother, girlfriend, whatever and try and get hold of an extra computer if you can. Obviously it depends on the speed of your laptop and things like that but yeah that's just my recommendation. Take it or leave it. Luckily I have my video editing desktop which is right next to my DJ setup. Yeah it means I can just you know use that to stream other things that i would recommend are extra camera angles so you know the whole point of this is to make it look different than if you're just doing it with your phone so if you can have two cameras at once and you can go between them that's going to make the stream way more interesting for your viewers i have my lumix gh5 which i'm actually recording this on and i use a majorel video capture card and i take the stream from my gh5 directly into my pc I know not everyone has spare cameras lying around, so you can actually look at getting your phone and using that as a camera. I'm gonna put up some apps here which help you do that. Some are for iOS and some are for Android. I'm not gonna get into it, but if you look at the comments, you'll see some recommendations for things that you can explore. I know some of you are probably thinking about whether you can use your GoPro or not as a webcam. Unfortunately, you are gonna need another bit of kit to do this. You're gonna need a video capture card and probably a micro HDMI to HDMI converter as that's what GoPro uses. And I'll let you do your own research and find your own capture cards, but just bear that in mind. Lights. That is another thing which I think you shouldn't underestimate the value of. Lights can really help elevate the look of a cheap camera. Likewise, they can also make good cameras look like potato if they don't have enough light. I'm not gonna go into any more detail than that, but all I'm gonna say is that cameras really need more light than you think and to make it look really professional, lights are good. Let's go into a couple of those things in a little bit more detail. The first thing I wanna talk about are sound cards. I have my Focusrite Sapphire 24 and that's just the interface I've got from the past. It's not particularly great or anything for this, it's just what I have. So yeah, I'd recommend just using whatever interface you have. If you don't have one, you can pick up a really cheap Behringer UCA 202. It's like £18.50 on Amazon right now, I think. And yeah, you can't get much cheaper than that. For a slightly more expensive one, which I hear is pretty recommended for this kind of thing, is the iRig 2, which is currently £80 around there on Amazon. If you have a mixer with a built-in sound card, like the DJ MS9, you can send the audio output from the spare USB, which will be on that interface. To do this, go into Pioneer Utility on your DJing laptop, open the mixer output tab, set USB five and six to mix or record out. Then you wanna plug your USB A into your streaming PC. This leaves USB available to plug into your DJing laptop and you can run Serato as normal. I will say that I couldn't get this to work for the life of me. And I believe that's because I have a Windows PC as my streaming PC. One thing about OBS is it doesn't actually recognize ASIO drivers, which are very common. And it also only recognizes the stereo input. It doesn't allow you to choose which audio channels you are um, taking the input from. As we're sending on channels five and six, you run into the issue of it just not recognizing that the input basically. There are ways around this. You can get like a sort of aggregating software to kind of make it so your, your channels on five and six are recognized on channels one and two, but that's out of the scope of this video. 
So OBS, let's get into the interface as obviously this is the most important part of the video. OBS appears to be quite a simple app on the surface, but it's actually incredibly useful and customizable. It's essentially another aggregating software and it's made up of sources, scenes, scene collections and profiles. Um, I'll get into more of that now. So sources. Sources are all your different sources of media. First things first, install everything that you have drivers for. So if you've got a Logitech webcam, install the drivers for that. If you've got your interface, install the drivers for that. That's gonna make it so that OBS recognizes them and you can select them within the sources panel. To add a new source, click on the plus sign here and you'll see all the different sources that we have available to us. The main ones we're gonna be using as DJs are video capture device or your camera and audio input capture. So that will be your audio interface. All these different things are what's gonna make your stream look better than someone who's just streaming with their phone. You can add lots of different elements to your stream and kind of make it look more interesting. Um, I'm not gonna go through all these, but you know, important ones might be media source. You can use videos as backgrounds for that kind of thing. Text, obviously you can name your stream. Um, you can use images. So like if you've got a DJ logo, you can put that in here and things like that. I would just recommend playing around with these, finding out what they do, and then that's gonna mean you can use them later on. So as an example, let's just add a new source. We'll do audio input capture. As you can see that I've already added them before, so they're here, but let's do it again just as a test. So if I do, we would select the driver here that we want to use. And obviously that's the Sapphire one here. Click that, click okay. And yeah, that's done. Right, the next thing to look at are scenes. So scenes are just different groupings of all your sources. You can set these up however you like, but I like to think of them as different angles that I want to show my viewers. As you can see, I have them set up with cam A, then cam B. That's black because it's, my camera's obviously not plugged in right now. Then I have cam A and B, and then I've got a, a slate, and I'll get into what that is later on. Here we've also got screen cap, which is not normally there. It's just that I'm actually recording this screen cap right now, and I need to leave that there so that you can see what I'm recording. So let's show you one of these as an example. If I click both cam A and B, this is what you see. So this is made up of all these different sources. So Sapphire, that would be my audio input obviously that's going to be on every one of these scenes because that's going to be the thing that you want to keep consistent throughout the whole thing you're going to have media source 2 which you can't see right now but there's a video which plays behind all of this got my gh5 which appears here and that's black because it's not plugged in got my webcam here and then there i've got the text so if i click this transition here i'll just show you what that will look like in reality so if i click that here yeah, the, the actual video plays through and you can see that my other screen would be here and yeah, you've got quite a nice looking kind of stream. It's slightly more interesting and yeah, it's just a bit better than what you can get with your phone basically. But yeah, you need to get creative here. Um, as I say, it's really how you separate your stream from everyone else's. You could put in GIFs to kind of like move around or pictures, logos. You could put in like a border, um, text to name your stream anything really that you want and it's just a way to make it look more visually interesting. So let's look at another example. Here we got Slate and again here's my audio input. Then we've got the media source which again is a video which goes around the back and then we've got this Be Right Back which is just a PNG with a see-through alpha channel and I'll show you that here. If I click that that's what would come up when you want to go to the toilet or something like that. And the viewers who are watching your stream are going to have something visual just to keep them interested in the meantime. So you layer up your sources like you would in any other program. If you've ever used um, Photoshop or anything like that, the higher it is, the further forward it is. You can move those around with these arrows here and you can basically stack things up, move them around within this window here. I will say that there are more settings here. If you click on the little cog, while selecting one of your elements, you can go in and change some extra things here. Um, for instance, if you go into video configuration here, we can change the focus and the exposure. We can turn them on to auto or off, depending on how we want to do it. Then we've got the resolution, things like that. Again, just if you don't know what it is, just leave it as normal and 
then you should be okay. But yeah, like just know that the options are there. Some other options you can find are is if you right click on the thing, go to like filters, say. I've got all these different ways of changing the image here, which could be useful. Again, play around with them. I'm not gonna go into any more detail than that right now, because it'll take forever. The more sources you have, the more difficult it's gonna be for your computer, especially when you're using video assets. That's why it's really recommended to have two computers, especially if you're gonna be doing more complex things. The next thing I wanna talk about are scene collections. This is something incredibly useful that I've seen a lot of other people miss out on their OBS tutorials. I've got two, I've got a DJ stream and I've got a screen cap. Screen cap is what I normally use for doing this kind of video where I'm recording the screen and I'm editing it and putting it on YouTube. I've set up the new one DJ stream for um, this purpose where I've got all my multiple scenes and I wanna flick between them to show my audience. Having two separate uses, this means you're gonna to wanna to tweak everything slightly differently and if you don't know about this feature, you can end up with tons and tons of scenes, tons of sources which are all kind of the same but slightly different and it soon gets really confusing. Just bear in mind that you can do this. You go to scene collection, create a new stream and you can separate out all your scenes and sources. That brings us on to profiles. As I mentioned before, you're going to want your settings optimized differently depending on whether you're recording a screen grab or streaming a DJ set and profiles are how you do this. I've mirrored my profiles and screen collections to be the same. And yeah, I would encourage you to do the same just for simplicity's sake. So just create a new profile and then go to settings, set them up how you want, and it will save them in separate locations for you. Once you've got your scene collections and your profiles set up, don't forget to back them up. You do so by clicking on the relevant drop down and going to export. So I'd get them all set up nicely, export them, put them somewhere safe so that you can bring them back in at a later date. So let's get into the rest of the GUI. Here we got our audio mixer. If you're a DJ, you're probably pretty used to seeing something like this. I like to right click on here and set it to vertical layout. If you don't, it's horizontal, but yeah, I prefer it this way. Here you can mute and unmute all your different tracks, set the volumes. And if you're streaming your DJ stuff, unless you're talking to a microphone or something like that, you're probably gonna have all these muted. I like to have studio mode activated. That basically gives me this extra preview window, which allows me to preview all my scenes by clicking on them here and then I can preview them before I send them over to the program window, which is what all the viewers are seeing. So to change between scenes, you actually click the transition button here. Boom, there you go. That was just a quick cut. And you've also got these ones here, which you can fade and things like that. So if I did that one, there's your Luma wipe. This one, that's your fade. And you set all those up down here in your stream transitions. Let's get into the settings. This bit can be a bit daunting when you first see it, but to be honest, you don't need to play with most of them. You just leave them as default if you don't know what they are. I'm just gonna go through the main settings which I personally change, and once you know what they are, you can tweak them to your liking. So the first tab is general. All I really change in here is automatically record when streaming. It's up to you if you wanna to record to your computer while streaming. Many platforms will keep recording up for you once you've streamed it, but it could be nice to have like a bit of redundancy in case something goes wrong. So that's all I change in this tab. Stream, this is where you link OBS to your streaming service of your choice. I'm not gonna baby through every streaming service. Just bear in mind that you need to find the stream key for the service of your choice and then you put it in here. As you can see, it's really long. Don't show this key to anyone or they could potentially stream onto your account, which obviously you don't want them to do. I'm streaming to Twitch, so that allows you to actually log on here if you want and that will connect to Twitch directly into your OBS like that. If you click here, you can see all the other services that you're able to stream to. Output, so output mode I've left on simple. Video bitrate, that's basically the quality of the stream. The higher you go on here, the better the quality. I've currently got that set to 6,000. The encoder, that's whether you're choosing your CPU or your GPU. That's the CPU, that's the GPU. I've got an NVIDIA GPU, so I'm gonna select that there. The audio bitrate is set to 160. Now, the reason I have these settings like this right now is because I'm streaming to Twitch and these are the Twitch recommended settings. If I set this to here, look, you can see that the upper limit for the current streaming service is 160. So that's why I've left it there. You can definitely get away with putting these higher. If I wasn't worried about the imposed limits by Twitch right now, I would probably put these up to like maybe this nine or 10,000 and I'd put this to 192 or higher. I think you can get away with a higher audio bitrate because obviously compared to video file sizes, audio is really tiny anyway. So yeah, you can probably get away with putting that much higher, especially if you're streaming as a DJ, you want the audio to be as best as possible. 
These settings are going to be determined by your internet speed and connection and what you can push it to. You know, if you've got a bad internet, you're going to have to bring these down. And it's also going to depend on your computer and whether your computer can handle pushing these limits. So recording path, that's pretty self-explanatory. Recording quality, I have high quality, medium size, and I leave this as MKV. If you put it to MP4 and your computer crashes, you're going to lose that file. It's going to be corrupted and unusable. If you leave it on MKV, that's not going to happen. It's going to still be usable. It does mean that you have to have an extra step. So you're going to have to convert the MKV file to something else later on. But you just do that by going to file, Remux recordings. These are all the MKVs I've got. And say I would click that one, open it up, and then Remux. Recording Remux. It's that fast. It does it super quickly. So because that's so fast, I have literally no qualms about recording to MKV. Next tab is audio. This is where you set all the different devices which show up in the audio mixer on the main page. Video. This is where you set your resolutions. Again, you need to find out the recommended settings from the platform that you're streaming to. Common resolution is going to be 1920 by 1080, like I've got. That's normal HD. 1080 by 1920, which is going to be your vertical layout, like an Instagram. And then maybe 1280 by 720, which is still HD, but it's like the lower HD. I would recommend keeping these the same. This is basically your monitor output, and this is the stream output. To keep CPU processing down, just keep them the same, and then your computer's gonna have less work to do. I keep the downscale filter at by cubic, and the FPS at 30. Most webcams only support 30 FPS, so it's probably best to just keep it at that. I don't change anything in hotkeys, and I don't change anything in advanced. So once you've got everything set up and you're ready to start streaming, all you do is click here and it will start streaming to the platform of your choice. I would recommend going on a different device like your phone or something like that and go into the stream and just checking that everything's working, checking your sound and you know just making sure that everything's working properly. On platforms like Twitch where you know you haven't got any followers yet, you can do a lot of testing before you actually really do go live and tell everyone about it. You know, it's a really good idea to get all the kinks ironed out before you go live, obviously. So streaming platforms. As mentioned, I like to use Twitch and there's a couple of things which you might want to change in here. So if you click on the little profile thing, go to settings, go to channels and videos. I like to put this one on low latency mode. That means that there's less of a delay so that if people are chatting to me in chat, I can respond to them in more real time. And I also like to store past broadcasts. As I say, I record them to my PC as well, but I like to just have both just in case and it doesn't cost you anything. So here's another couple of things I want to talk about. Um, if you're going to stream to Instagram, you can do that through OBS using a program called Yellow Duck, and that will allow you to make a temporary stream key and put that into OBS. Bear in mind, Instagram still kicks people off quite often <laughs> due to copyright. And if that happens, you're going to have to restart your stream from scratch and you can't stream to other um, platforms simultaneously while streaming to Instagram. That brings us on to the next thing, which is restream.io. And if you use that, you can go to multiple platforms all at once. You could go to like Facebook Live, YouTube, and set up different streams all at once from the same OBS. As I say, you can't do that at the same time as Instagram. But yeah, I haven't actually played with these last two things, but I thought they were worth mentioning because you might want to use them. Uh, I'll probably take a look at them, but yeah, not in this video. So last thing last, today Mixcloud have dropped their own streaming service called Mixcloud Live. It's still in beta service, but they've rushed it out because of the whole coronavirus and the fact that they know all these DJs are streaming. This is potentially a game changer because they are a licensed platform and they do pay all their royalties to the labels and the publishers and, and who they need to basically, which means that the chances of getting your audio dropped are much less, which is great. So yeah, check it out. I've not used it before, but I think that you just generate a stream key like you do normal platforms and you can add that into OBS and it should work in a very similar way. Whew. I mean, I've had to do this like three times now and it gets harder each time. But yeah, like because I'm recording to OBS with OBS talking about OBS, it becomes really challenging. So yeah, like if you found this useful, please like and subscribe because these honestly, these videos take ages and I put a lot of effort into them and it's really nice when people like and subscribe and follow because it kind of keeps me going I suppose and gives me a bit of a validation and I've, I'm, you know, I'm a weak soul so I need that kind of stuff but yeah see you on the next one